Hello and welcome to the short webinar titled Reverend John Harper, God's Man to the Last. This is a part of the 10-part series on the 100-year anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. The John Harper story is an inspirational one. It's a true love story that you will not see in the movies, and it's the most spiritual story of this series. In order to understand it well, though, it's best to understand John Harper's life before the Titanic voyage. John Harper was born in Scotland, May 29, 1872. He had six brothers and sisters, and his father was a draper and did not make a lot of money. And a draper was somebody that made the heavy fabrics that drapes uh, were made out of that hung in the homes. He went to work at age 14 or 15. Before that, at age 13, God had stirred his heart and he had become a believer in Jesus Christ. By age 17, he was preaching sermons and training at a missions in London. At age 24, he started a church with 25 members, and by age 35, the church had grown to 500 members in size. Great success in ministry followed John Harper, yet sorrow came to his family. He had waited 10 years to marry his wife, Annie Bell. But his wife died just two years later after giving birth to their daughter, Nina, also known as Nan Harper. He continued to do his ministry work, however, even during this time period, and his work continued to flourish. He had a real heart for people. The church grew so much it was difficult to get in. Some nights he would stay up and walk through the sanctuary and pray for each member by name. When church services were had, within minutes of the service starting, people were placing their faith in Christ. The church also had a profound ministry to the poor. He became known in the United States. In Chicago, the Moody Bible Church became aware of his work. Moody Bible Church had a powerful partnership with the YMCA in reaching the young men of Chicago. John Harper was invited to come in late 1911, and the impact was profound. Many lives were touched, and many of the church's outreach projects were funded. He was invited to return in 1912. After arriving back in London in January of 1912, he booked passage back just three months later. During this time, he was ministering through a variety of meetings. Harper was leading some meetings before his April 12th, or April 1912 trip, and someone stood up and warned him not to travel on the Titanic because he felt that some mishap would come. This man went as far as to offer to pay for his passage on another vessel rather than the Titanic. But John Harper, in his Scottish vernacular, said, I must needs go. He boarded the Titanic Wednesday morning, April 11, 1912, at Southampton, the same port that the Pilgrims had sailed out of 300 years later. He boarded with his daughter Nan and his sister Jessie. On April 12th, he wrote his final letters and mailed them from Queenstown, Ireland, when they made port there. He wrote to a friend he called Brother Livingston. He mo made note that he is penning this note from Queenstown, and he encouraged his friend in ministry. The evening of April 14th, just hours before Titanic's tragedy, tragedy, while others were dining, dancing, and playing cards, he was on deck talking to a young deck hand about his faith. Later that evening, as there was the glints of reds of the setting sun, he said this, It will be beautiful in the morning. By 10 p.m., John Harper had finished his devotions and gone to sleep. At 11.40 p.m., the iceberg was struck by the Titanic. John Harper took his daughter Nan and his sister Jessie to the lifeboat. He then could be heard saying, Women and children first, and even encouraging Christians to give up their places in the lifeboats for others. Harper gave his life jacket to a man that did not have one. He said, Do you know the Lord? No, came the response. Then you need this more than I. One of the last survivors to leave the Titanic said that he saw Harper ask the band to play Nearer My God to Thee, and after that the hymn Autumn, which includes the line, Hold Me Up in Mighty Waters. He then gathered people around him in the large circle on the after deck. Harper knelt in the center of this circle, and he prayed for the people surrounding him. Some movies have tried to portray this, and it can come off as kind of uh, denying or somewhat foolish, and yet the spiritual courage that it took for this pastor to take these actions and to minister to these people that were facing death in the eye is quite profound. As the ship disappeared beneath the water, John Harper continued to live out his high calling in the water amongst those who were dying. Here the story is told by a man that John Harper spoke to in the water. 
It was told a few years later at the Hamilton, Ontario YMCA, and this rescue man told the story in a YMCA meeting, and he uses some spiritual language that might seem a little old-fashioned to our ears today, but listen all the way through, and I'll make some comments at the end. I was a careless sinner on board when the Titanic went down, and with hundreds more I found myself struggling in the cold, dark waters of the Atlantic. I caught hold of something and clung to it for dear life. The wail of the perishing all around us was ringing in my ears. When there floated by me a man who called to me, Is your soul saved? I said, No, it is not. Back came the words, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. We drifted apart, then seemed drifted together once more. Is your soul saved again? he cried out. I fear it is not. Then if you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul shall be saved. Again we were separated by rolling currents. And I heard him call out this message to others as they sank beneath the waters to eternity. Then and there, with two miles of water beneath me, in my desperation, I cried to Christ to save me, and I believed and was saved. Well, this language is rather old-fashioned, the saved language, but it simply means spiritually rescued. And this rescued man told this story in a meeting in Ontario, or Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. John Harper died at age 39 years, ministering to those of the Titanic in their last moment of their lives. His daughter Nan went on to train at, the Bible, at a Bible college and went to work amongst the poor. On her tombstone marker it says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. In Glasgow, Scotland, when the congregation built a new church in 1922, it was dedicated Harper Memorial Church. And congregations and pastors that have led that church ever since then are inspired by the John Harper story. The details of John Harper's story were preserved by Seth Sykes. He made a set of slides about Harper's final mission, and for a hundred years this presentation has been shown around Scotland. It has inspired and challenged Christians to live sold-out lives to God and to others, and challenged others to consider things of faith. More recently, a book and short film, Titanic's Last Hero, was produced by Moody Adams, and he has helped keep this story alive for this generation. So here as we close are some questions for consideration. What do you need to be rescued from? Bad relationships? Hurts of the past? Addictions that are ruining your life? A feeling of lack of meaning or purpose? Bitterness? Unforgiveness? At different times in this series, we've suggested the 21-day faith experiment. And with the inspiration of John Harper's life and story, we'd like to suggest it again now as a place to maybe get resolution on some of these issues and consider your own faith journey as well. My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.